Now what? What do we do now? Do you remember? Heavens to, be heavens to Betsy, look at the background. Bob Backus and Mike Farley apparently are, <laughs> are uh, join, joining us from Great Beyond. From Great Beyond. It's not, they're not dead yet. Yet. Anyway, so tonight on Rack Paper Hand Grenades, I am Gary Harper, your semi-honorable guest. This is Eric Eastman, the other guy. The other guy. <laughs> Whose honorability is also deeply in question. Oh. Jeez, yeah. Don't forge ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and the most hon honorable uh, Janine Patel, Patrell that I know from church, and she's been on the show before. I forgot why. Talking about homeschooling. Homeschooling. Okay, because oh. that's how these two yeah, crazy how people, yeah. human beings, met. Uh, Catherine Perdo O'Brien, the honorable, was also. You were in the legislature for two terms or one? One term. One term. It seemed like two. It seemed yeah. some. It's a lot. It, it was a, a busy lot term. Of work. Uh, yeah. It wasn't <laughs> long enough. It w yeah. Well, I, I intend to run again. And you do it good. So good. We'll good. see how it goes. Yeah, you narrowly. Uh, yeah, I didn't lose by much. The first time I, I ran, I lost by like six. Okay. So this last time, how many? Mm. I think Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Yes, yeah, not this, and that's, that's a big. A dis that's a. A lot of votes in dairy. Yeah, there. Um, there are ten reps, so you know there are a lot of us. From okay. That town. Anyway, so I I was I did call you on the show to talk about what was it? How great I am. No, yeah, but everybody knows that. No, oh. it was something else. <laughs> oh. History. History. My award of, of humility, my excellence. Oh yes, yes, we were brag. We, yes. we were yes. sharing bragging, bra bragging about how hu humble we were. Yes, and I think that <laughs> I, think I won I, that. I think I, I think I'm the most humble. I, I, I don't think so, but anyway, it. let me see. I get oh, I want oh. proof. <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes my humility is just it's wrapped in a towel, no less. Wow. I don't think I got that in junior gets... high. Yeah. In junior high. Yep. Excellence in humility. Paul, yes. can, can you zoom in on this awesome piece of artwork? I guess not. Notice the label. So 1984. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. You, get you, you got to get your hand out of the way. It reads what? 1984. 1984. Excellent. A very noteworthy year. <laughs> Excellence. In humility, <laughs> true excellence, awarded to Catherine Prudhomme. Wow! Now that's fantastic. not like a fly-by-night kind of uh, piece of tape. tape no, this looks like extra had. special no. pink tape. Actually, no, it's, it's sticky and really it's well. Not like a, yeah, if it was just any piece of tape, or anything like right? That. It yeah. would it would not it would have fallen off by. And it's very pretty and pink, given that yes. it's from 1984. Yes. Right, because yeah, if it was just a sticky note, it would have already fallen off by now. Yes. It would have had to Plus, put on this afternoon or something <laughs> for it to stay on at this point. You would right. think. Yeah, except yeah. I don't think sticky notes were invented until like the 90s. That's a sticky subject. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> right. good, good point, good point. But that's really impressive. Thank you. Thank um, you very much. I know. Uh, Look at the humility depicted here in this, in this award. It's, this is a pose I like to strike. Yeah, it's astonishing. At random times in my life. Right. <laughs> I have no hubris. <laughs> Absolutely none. Eric, Eric and I actually wrote the book on. Uh, Appear to have an engineering. On staff. humility. I know I wrote the book on humility, and then it, coincidentally he had written a very similar book on humility and how he achieved it. Well, I very humbly stole it, and then and then proceeded to, uh, without guile, completely re-edit the thing so that it, it became the most humble publication ever. Was that just before you did the, uh, the one on plagiarism? Is that the, the... That would be the sequel. Yeah. Well, yeah. the thing is, is plagiarism really is, is one of the greatest compliments. If you're plagiarizing somebody, yep. that means you have great regard for their, what they had to say. Or you forgot to do your assignment. Either one. <laughs> hey, I want, I want to start off before we, be, before we continue on our uh, patting one another on the back for our profound humility um, is the shooting which is horrible um, Las Vegas mm -hmm. huh? yeah, Las Vegas, course, yeah. yeah. 
Excuse me, could you have Eric stand that bottle up or get it off the table completely, please? Sure. Thank you. I could stand it on its head if you like. That would be weird. Just don't flip it. Just put it on the rug if you want to do that, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anyway. The shooting. Sorry, the shooting. Yeah, that was that was so bizarre. We have so little information. It was, I know somebody was posting that they believe there was a second shooter on the fourth floor. So what I did is, uh, and I love this, I went to uh, Google Maps and then went Street View. Because mm -hmm. if you look at where the, the hotel is and where the, the venue was, there's an intersection on the road right in between mm -hmm. it. So I looked at Street View of the hotel from that, because that would have been uh, looking up at the hotel. There's no way anybody on the fourth floor could have possibly got a shot off. They wouldn't have been able to see anybody at that right. inside that stadium. Well, actually, yep. my husband and I were in Vegas um, at the end of June, beginning of July, and we were staying in that general area. Yeah. So yeah, there's there's really no way you had to be up in the upper floors. Yeah. And the windows are uh, would have been shot out. Right. Right. So how does that work? Because you can't you open, can't the, open windows. the windows. You'd have to shoot them out. Yeah, I don't know how that works so at I, all because you would think I don't understand that. just shooting them out that would have been a problem. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. Uh, that's uh, somebody said that those window panes are 800 pounds each, because they're hurricane proof. Mm -hmm. How many hurricanes do they have in Las Vegas? I don't think they get any. I probably really built. Don't. Sounds like a building code deal. Yeah, yeah. or maybe for strong winds, sandstorms. Uh, yeah, probably is what something. They, yeah. But yeah, there's a lot of unanswered questions. I mean. Um, you know, all all the liberals are going at saying, "Well, we got you know." Elizabeth Warren was talking about how we got to do gun control again. Of course, she was. And um, I posted that on Facebook today, and I said, "Well, okay." So now she's saying we got to do gun control. She knows she's she's a very bright woman. I've heard her do speeches and and lectures on different subjects. She's a very smart lady. She has to know that the more the Democrats talk about gun control in Washington, D.C., the higher the sales of guns are. Mm -hmm. It always goes up when they start. I mean, I'm sure there's a run on uh, bump, bumper stocks or whatever they're called right now just because of uh, the Democrats talking about gun control. And she's smart enough to understand that. So why is she talking? I mean, if she really wanted to do something, she would be talking behind the scenes. Like in the, in the legislature, if you want to get something done that isn't politically popular, you would go behind the scenes and say, hey, Gary, I'm working on this well, bill. She's, she's got to speak to her base, and that's probably what she's doing. Well, and you were saying if she actually wanted to do something, she, you, what makes you think she wants to do anything about it? Yeah, I got she wants to bring up the topic, and she wants to be on the record as saying, yes, I'm you know, pro-gun control, but... That doesn't mean she actually wants to do anything about it. That's what I'm saying, yeah. She's well, making political hay. Never let right. a good crisis go to waste. Oh, yeah. You know the mantra. Saul Lewski. <laughs> she, she needs to signify that she's outraged and wants to do something, and then when it isn't done, it'll be not her fault. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. that, that's all it is. It's, so it's cover your tail? Correct. Cover your CYA, tail, CYA, yes. motivate your base, and get more money for your run for uh, president in 2020. Sounds about right. Right? Yep. Yeah, so... I, 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 I saw somebody make it made a really good point also where uh, they were talking about the issue of sexual assault now whose mm -hmm. fault is it when someone's when a woman is sexually assaulted is it because she was provocatively dressed because she was walking alone late at night mm -hmm. or is it the rapist's fault right it's solely the rapist's fault right but with in this situation we're looking for all kinds of other things that f uh, that are at fault not the shooter's the shooter, you know. It's the shooter's fault for doing what he did. Right. But so why are we talking about all these other issues when when it comes to sexual assault, we're always taking it straight back to the person that did the original yeah. crime. Well, yeah. but I think we need to figure out, you know, if there's a mental illness involved or something like that. I mean I think that's what really concerns me is just as I was telling Gary on the way in I can't imagine a sane person doing that. No. So you gotta figure out what is, you know, what's going on. And if there's, you know, we need to, we need to, I think mental health needs to be addressed more. We, you know, we need to, to deal with that. And it can't be a stigma. It's got to be just dealt with, like you deal with well, any other disease. I, I know I had a professor, uh, uh, Smith, from UNH on the show quite a few years ago. And he was on t 
talking about bullying. Is he that criminologist? He might be. Yeah, okay. Kind of famous. Yeah, yeah. smart guy. Smith, UNH. UNH. Okay. And he's, he's sitting over there and he's explaining to me that all these mass shootings were people that were being bullied. Mm -hmm. Okay? And um, so I asked him, and I, I don't, I never bring people on the show to antagonize them. I just don't do that. I think it might make good theater, but I don't think it's, uh, I, don't, I don't believe in humiliating people. I think that's the worst thing you can do to people. Um, anyway. So he's on, he says, he's talking about the, the correlation between bullying and, and violence like this. Well, I know a lot of kids that were bullied in school, and I don't know any of them that shot 20, 50 people because of it. And so I had asked him that I had heard in the legislature that there is a direct correlation between psychotropic drugs and mass shootings. And he said, well, there, there might be. So I, I, I pushed him on the, on the uh, question. I says, wait a second, you've just spent years examining all these mass shootings and, and the variables involved. You know the answer to this. And he re reluctantly said over 75% of them either were or were just getting off of medication. The shooter did have a prescription filled in. July for some anti-anxiety medication. Exactly. Well, that's what I, I don't know if that's true it story. Small, it was a small amount. It didn't seem to be like a large amount, but I don't know how much he was taking each day and if he was continuing. And if, I, I don't know. There's so many things we don't know. Yeah, that, yeah. that's one of those. That, that falls into the where we don't know. But right. but if he's got that much money, he can buy illegal weapons and or, uh, equipment, then I'm sure he could buy more of that if he needed it. Right. But... And there also, is a correlation yeah. between those kind of medications because medications affect everybody differently. Right. Even if you Certainly if you do. look on the bottle of a lot of those medications, it says if you have suicidal idolations, please call your doctor. Well, what's the inverse of what's it, another face of suicide is homicide. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and obviously he was suicidal too, because death by cop. You Death know. by cops or by himself, no, I apparently. I think he killed himself. Yeah, he killed That's himself. But still, the idea being that, you know, in, in that big... Once he yeah. started shooting, there was only one result that was going to happen eventually, and he was yeah. going to die. Right. Here's a question. Are we... Is it conclusive? Are we certain that there was only one perpetrator involved in this particular incident? Do we know this for a fact? We don't know hardly anything for a fact. That's, yeah. that's so far, everything that's come down, yeah, there's I mean, been no... There's, there's a lot of unanswered questions. Yeah. I, I hesitate to say anything because I, it, can, it can change. And then his, mm. his uh, girlfriend just came back to the country today, so there will be more things that they'll find out as well. Yeah, because they had very early. Had sent, him, sent her like $100,000 and sent her out of the country or something like that. But again, it's... it's oh, my. With news moving as fast as it does... You sometimes you may get something and then find out an hour later that no, that wasn't what it is. So sure. you really need to get you know, which comes back to when I was talking about history. You know, you got to you got to get the whole picture. You can't just take this little snippet. Absolutely. And um, that's why what we have now with the twenty four hour news, where everybody's trying to jump the gun on everybody else. No sure. pun intended, by the way. <laughs> There's um, you you get a lot of information out there that may may have an ounce of truth to it. But the majority of it isn't. And then you've got everybody speculating on this little ounce of truth that they don't know. And then that comes down as, you know, that there that gets passed around and passed around. And I think it was Winston Churchill who said, uh, a lie can make it around the world before the truth gets its pants on. <laughs> did he say that? I think it was, I think so it was that's a great like that, quote. Yeah. Somebody it was did. probably on the internet. It was somewhere. Winston, yeah. yeah Winston, <laughs> Winston Churchill tweeted that. Yeah. Oh, did it? Just, just, just earlier today. Just yeah. Yeah. I think that fits in 142 characters. Too. Yeah. That's <laughs> pretty good. But yeah, yeah, that that is absolutely true. I mean, I think, I think nowadays too, you have the um, the added irresponsibility of people who want to get X number of clicks for their website. Mm -hmm. So they make up a story like the the story, like I said, was earlier last night was that there was a fourth floor shooter and somebody posted a video supposedly from a, a their, their uh, cell phone 
Well, if you look at the at the hotel, there's no way somebody on the fourth floor could possibly have done that. Also, there may have been uh, there may have been flashes of light that someone was seeing that could have been reflected because so many of the buildings in that area are all uh, glass. Yeah. yeah. So well, who Mandalay knows? is particularly reflective. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I, so there's a lot of things people could yeah. have been seeing, and I'm sure they'll analyze. But it, it was all. Uh, it was all so bizarre for the, the like his brother. I think was with him just a, a year or so ago and he only had two handguns and a long gun you know and all of a sudden he's got all this stuff they also the democrats are talking about making machine guns illegal well they're already illegal yeah, I, have been I, since I don't know if they know that they no they just don't seem to actually understand what the laws are already right before makes, they start making new ones it makes great great talk during a 24-hour news cycle though mm -hmm. doesn't yeah it does. makes you sound righteous and, yeah. and with the commercials only lasting 60 seconds you need that 60 second you know you basically need to twitter your you know what you've got so everything's a bite yep everything's a bite and we don't look at the whole picture right and do you remember mm. during the uh the bombing in boston and the sarnaya brothers and all of that sure there was so much we didn't know at first and there were so many different things being said early yep. on and then everything was changing real fast and mm -hmm. um when i when i learned that they were chechen i i was i was pretty alarmed and i think that that was part of the response as well because uh the chechens um can respond quite um dramatically <laughs> you know they can be the like I, i'll just say i'll just say it they've often been the worst terrorists you can imagine yeah okay in russia you know in so, russia yeah, yeah. so it, russia's been dealing with terrorism like that for a long time yep yes that brings me to my book I'm, oh wait did I'm, you write the book no 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 i'm reading this book winter is coming it has nothing to, what is that show game of thrones it has nothing to do with game of thrones yeah kasparov it's by gary, gary Kas, kasparov who i met um, yeah. giving a giving a talk you know a few days ago um in in cambridge and he talks about the situation in Russia and how little Americans have been paying attention to the situation in Russia since, um, since the election, not the election of of Putin, that we've sort of forgotten all about it and thought to ourselves, oh, well, Russia's more free than it used to. Be. It's not the it's same not. story no. as it was in the '90s at all. No. And uh, yeah, Putin basically pushed it, it back towards uh, its communist roots, so to speak. Authoritarian, well, authoritarian yes, roots, yes. yeah. with yeah, little, you know, uh, traditional Russian Catholicism or mm -hmm. uh, orthodoxy. But it's, I think, it's more window dressing than it is anything else. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. headed back toward the dictatorship and yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, state control at least an over, oligarchy over yeah. everyday options are becoming. Mm -hmm. I don't know untenable. about the religious scene, but but the press is not free. No, no, of course mm -hmm. it's not. No, uh, um, Putin makes gr great uh, pains to show how he is religious now. Uh, you know, the I, I forget what what branch of Catholicism is. It's a, it's an old um, Russian Orthodox. Russian or okay, Russian Orthodox Church, mm -hmm. and and uh, they've been allowed to rebuild because under communism you can't have any other god except the, the government, and. Um, They've been allowed to rebuild, but I, I'm getting word that actually Protestant fundamentalist Christians are being persecuted in Russia. Um, that would not surprise me because no. anyone thinking independently and having values aside from the gov apart from the government, they'll, they'll always be dangerous because they're they're harder, to, they're much harder to control. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's part of, that goes back to what we're talking about with, you know, with the whole gun control is that, you know, whenever a tyrant takes over a country, the first thing they do is take away the weapons. Yep. Oh, absolutely. And as long as, you know, and that's part of being an armed society allows us to be, to think freely. You know, it allows us that freedom to, to be what, who we are, where I'm sure that there's, you know, if you looked at Russia right now, I'm sure that the weapons, there are no pub private weapons out there. Yeah, there is. There is, there is, but they're... I believe they're allowed to have handguns because they're not really military guns, so they're... Okay. See, that's actually, I'm glad that's you brought... That's another thing I don't know either because um, he either ha he hasn't talked about it yet or what. Okay. I don't know. But I, I know that um, that's actually a really good point because everybody's talking about somebody posted 
a uh, semi-conservative friend posted uh, on, on Facebook, you know, why do you need those type of weapons? And that's just it. That's, that's, those are the types of weapons the Constitution actually protects. A Constitution does not protect you f to own a, a hunting rifle. Hmm. Hunting has absolutely nothing to do with the Constitution. There is no provision that you have a right to go hunting. The Constitution protects the right of people to own military-type firearms. That's what their it's that's what the protection is. Yeah, so they could be a, um, a force against a tyrannical government. Correct. Right. Equal force parity. And it's and, and with it's with those that would inflict tyranny. Right. It's not and and, and I know I, I posted this something about that and I, a friend said, well, that's all a myth because somebody posted an article wrote an article about how that parody was was uh, a myth. It isn't a myth. There are 1.5 million members of the armed forces, United States Armed Forces. Mm -hmm. There's 100 million gun owners, okay? And they have a lot more guns than 100 million. But there's 100 million, roughly, gun owners in the United States. We outnumber them like, a, you, know, um, uh, you know, what is that, 60 to 1 or 70 to 1. Um, plus, the presumption is that if the government tried to enforce all its will on the public and take away guns or whatever, whatever heinous thing they decided to do, it's presumed by those people that the military would be on their side. Well, that's not true. I mean, we saw that in the Civil War, but the military split up. Right. So there would be a percentage of the military that would say no 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 we're not we're not backing you on this one and they would side with the people right so the um the idea that the second amendment maintains the power in the hands of the people is still a very legitimate argument in spite of the fact that the military has some pretty cool stuff nowadays I remember you asked that, on, uh, Catherine asked that on her Facebook on uh, Constitution Day, was what's your favorite amendment? And oh, yeah. the second came up a lot. <laughs> yeah, mostly. And, yeah, because it, that's the one that protects all the others. Oh, do you see what my answer, you remember what my answer was? Remind us. The 10th oh, Amendment to yes. the New Hampshire Constitution. I would have predicted uh, that, uh, yes. Okay, yeah. yes. The 10th so and the 9th are... That's yeah. the right to um, re rebel. It's not the right to rebel. The it's the obligation, obligation yeah. to rebel. to dissent. It's an yeah. obligation. Once, if the government gets to the point where it's too oppressive, you have an, not only a right but an obligation to fight, fight with whatever means necessary to regain your freedom. Well, I don't know what the Russian constitution is, but um, that would be fascinating if it was in there as well. I doubt it. I oh. doubt it as well, considering the way he's talking. And this is just one person's opinion on, on, on everything, but the way he's talking about uh, what's happening in Russia, I'm, the, the, the corruption is just mind-blowing. And uh, did, did Kasparov's talk revolve around that theme? Yes, it did. Okay. And Oh, I should back back up and tell you who Gary Kasparov is. A lot of people don't remember that sure. he was the world chess champion for many years, yeah. and now he's a human rights activist. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, so it's really fascinating to listen to his um, arguments and his observations because he's obsessed with logic and he's obsessed with missed opportunities. He, you know, he writes everything like a chess player. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. And uh, that's really interesting. We do disagree on a few issues that I feel, I, I actually, I, this may sound really arrogant, but I feel like if, if we could sit down and talk about them, I may convince him. To, to yeah, which yeah. is a, a very arrogant thing to say, but. Uh, whoa, 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 I'm taking that away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very again, hence the pose. Uh, <laughs> 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 Most humble uh, ever in my junior high school. Yes. Yes. Yeah, sorry. No sorry. Pride. <laughs> Go ahead. I didn't realize you were that much older than I am. <laughs> that much? What? Oh, you 1984. You were in junior high school. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, that was a year after I got married. That was a year. <laughs> oh wow! I'm ancient. Wow. It's okay. Wow. 1984. I was pretending to be a college student. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I went to three different junior high schools, so it's amazing they got to know me well enough to. Yeah. Well, obviously they did. In two years. Yeah. Anyway, so continue. You were going to say that you wish you could. If a couple yeah, of chat with him. I would chat with him and t discuss a few things with him. Uh, he does. He has some. I would just call them illogical. 
uh, conclusion. Uh, well, conclu conclusions on a few things, but but really, there. This is what his book is about. It's about the Russian government and uh, the corruption. Where does he live now? Does he still live in Russia? No. He bailed. He does not want to live in Russia because he doesn't think it's safe. Which oh. is really um, which is reasonable which is if he's writing books about it. It's I, I was going to say I don't know if he'd be able to get away with some of what he's putting well, out there. Um, he's he former KGB, and I don't think he's I don't think former is necessarily excellent <laughs> excellent observation, and a lot Did of people don't yeah, yeah a lot yeah, of people yeah, don't yeah, realize KGB. that, and that's one of his complaints about Putin is he came on the scene like a blank slate, you know, fill in whatever you want, and he's former KGB, so. Um, <sighs> Yeah, I, I a lot would, of people are overlooking that. I, I would debate the, the former. I really, yeah. he, he has a lot of the, oh, the key. Putin, not, lot. not Kasparov. No, 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 no. Putin, yeah, Putin, Putin yeah. is former. Yeah, 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 former. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I think that a lot of the way he runs things is very, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a KGB. It's yeah. very top down. Yeah. 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 Okay, so, so Kasparov is, um, he lives in New York and uh, I think he calls it self-imposed self exile in New York with his wife and their children. And I think also London, but um, does he go to the park and do speed chess just to? <laughs> you know that that would be so Play much fun. Everybody. He should he should put on a little disguise. I think a lot of people would rec would recognize him. It would be really hard for him to do that and, and just go play play people and have fun. That reminds that me of the Kasparov so Gambit. Why, yes, it does. <laughs> 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 All right, so so he is the chairman of the Human Rights Foundation, which was run by Vaclav Havel Havel before him. And he ran for uh, president of Russia back in 08, uh, not really thinking he was going to win mm -hmm. because he, he knew it was uh, the deck was stacked against him, but because he wanted to call attention to the fact that the deck was so stacked against him. I mean, I, I, I can't think of anybody more famous coming out of Russia, a bigger celebrity coming out of Russia. I, I, just, I just don't know of any myself. Not since Zolchenitsyn. It's, yeah. It's been a while. What was what was he was this, who was the uh, who was the activist that came to the United States and lived in Vermont? The uh, land anti landmine activist. No, no, no. Who got the, the Russian Nobel that Prize? came in the eighties, seventies. He moved here in hmm. the seventies. He okay. uh, that's a good question. Uh, no, I was no. in elementary school, so I can um, pass. <laughs> oh come on! <sighs> but he came over here. Um, He's got a very long Russian name, so I can't get it's totally escaping me. And he spoke at Harvard in, around 1979. And before that, he was he was like the darling of the media because he, you know, he was a, you know, back then we were still we were still in the midst of the Cold War, you know. And when he came over, he was like heralded as this great, you know, humanitarian. Then he spoke in front of Harvard. And um, they hated him after that. Oh boy! Now I have he, to look him up. Thanks. He wasn't parroting the party line. He Whatever was that, not. Yeah, he was not. That was. And and again, he's he's probably a lot like um, uh, Kasparov. Kasparov. He's yep. probably a lot like Kasparov, in that he comes from a Russian mindset, and then he comes over here and he see like he saw the United States and he wasn't that impressed with it either. Mm. The one of the ones uh, the statements he made that um, um, I really like was something to the effect that in, in his speech at Harvard he said that I came from a country that had no rule of law and it's a very horrible thing. But living in a country where the rule of law is the only thing it still falls far short of what humanity is capable of. Which yes, I thought yes, was a yes. pretty awesome observation. Yes, and all right. Well, so, so what Kasparov is also talking about happening in the '90s is, and then and then um, the late '90s, and then uh, after Putin comes in, is that um, Americans and and uh, you know, and our um, our secretaries of state also seem to think like, okay. Everything's free over there now. It's cool, and we're gonna just trust them. And he talked about Bush. Remember um, the first, uh, the second Bush said, "I looked into his eyes, and I tr yeah. didn't trust him." He talked about yeah. Putin, and 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 he's annoyed with the naivete of that. Oh yeah, this is yeah. stupid. Yeah. This is W talking. Yeah, yeah, I think you know W was I think tr okay. He was a people person, and he wanted mm. he just wanted to get along with people so yep. much that I think he wasn't. Um, 
wasn't as savvy as he should have no, been. No, no, because he was just trying to get along with people so much. Um, I asked, I got a chance to ask Bush a question, and that was my sense of him, was that he was nervous about the question, which I didn't think was that surprising of a question. It was about most favored nation trade status with uh, China. Right. Sure. And he... So it's on the heels of Tiananmen Square, too. Yes, and he, he seemed to think that... Uh, most favored nation trade status with China would open up China to democracy and people would know more about the United States and then they would demand it for themselves. Right. You know, uh, so. Well, this they was, want to get killed. <laughs> right, and this was long after Tiananmen Square, of course. Yeah. Uh, but still, that was his opinion on it. And so, of course, if you have that opinion already going in, you're not going to put governors on your relationship with, with, with your trade relationship with that nation. And so. Uh, um, you're just going to trust that everything will be fine and people will get to know the United States more. I think that sort of is happening, but then what can Chinese people really do about that? I was, listening, I was, I was listening to a Chinese woman who, um, I forget what her name is. I think she's down in Texas. She ran for Senate or Congress or something like that. She said she was a Republican until 2008 when uh, Bush thought it was okay to bail out the bank, so then she turned libertarian. But she came here as a, as a uh, she came to the United States, but when she, she remembered being in China as a young girl and just worshiping Mao. Okay, they were programmed to worship Mao. That's mm -hmm. all they understood, and they, she just, that's what, the way she was. And when Mao died, she remembered crying and crying and crying and crying. And she went to, um, she met an American and went to his, uh, uh, into the hotel to talk to him privately. And he gave her a copy of the Declaration of Independence. And it blew her away. It just unraveled everything mm -hmm. she had been taught since childhood. Because the idea that she, as an individual human being, had had natural rights hmm. just was beyond anything she had ever heard before. Well, let me share a story with you about having um, a Chinese exchange student uh, that I was speaking to, that my husband was speaking to, when I was ho we were homeschooling our children. Uh, we were holding, uh, homeschooling our younger daughter at the time. Our older daughter was going to high school and had also been an exchange student in China. Uh, and the, uh, I'm actually a little hesitant to say exactly who this person was, but it was, it was a person in the program and she was talking to us about homeschooling and just, it was a new idea to her. And she said, why are you homeschooling? And my husband told her that, um, he, we wanted to be able to, one, one reason was we'd like to be able to, um, individualize her education so that what she is, uh, the way she learns and that she does well at, we can we can do more of that. And my she was dyslexic, so that was sure. a, that was a problem as well. Mm -hmm. So we wanted we needed to spend a lot more time with her on certain areas. Uh, and this person, the Chinese student, started crying because she said that it was something they never even thought about mm -hmm. in China. Right. And she was the number one student at the number one school in a very big. Uh, city in China and she was a wonderful person too she it wasn't like there was any she, I felt like she was very authentic and she was very popular and my daughter came home after going to that high school and said uh, the reason that she's popular is because she's so nice and caring and thoughtful towards everyone and that's why she's so popular but on top of that she's the number one student she's you know uh, she's an amazing person and she my, my daughter was really blown away that the real reason you become popular at a high school in China is because you are truly a, you know a great friend and and uh, a lot of character had mm -hmm. a lot of character really and flowed. but that had never really crossed her mind and another thing they did with these students was they took them on the freedom trail and I was just shocked I'm thinking why are you bringing them on the freedom trail what are you gonna expect these kids not to pay attention to anything that's that's being said they speak English and I gave her a speech um, that was given by Daniel Webster at the dedication of the Bunker Hill Monument and she was afraid to bring it home. She was afraid to have it in her luggage when she got home. So she said, I'll read it, but I can't bring it home. It can't be discovered oh. by customs yeah. or, or 
Right, and the reason I gave it to her, she was going to the Bunker Hill Monument later that day with, with this, you know, field trip. So I thought that would be appropriate. And I also thought that it was, it was something that was like way over the top educationally. Yeah. And she'd be like, oh, okay, thanks, yeah. Instead, she's like, I'll read it, but I can't bring it home. And, and she was afraid of that. And I was just thinking, oh. Well, the thing horrible. that gets me is when not only what the, you know, like the kids from China and that kind of stuff can't understand democracy, the kids here can't understand. We, we talk about, like, you know, North Korea's in the news all the time. And the kids will look and go, well, why don't they just take this guy out of here, you know? It's like, why don't they just vote him out of office? And we're trying to explain, vote is not an option there. Right. Um, you know, and they, they Oh, that's not true. They vote in North yeah, Korea. Just like in what Russia, is the matter they vote with you? For Putin, right? Well, they right. Vote okay, for but, Putin but, too. but the, right. But the idea is that you know they they can't understand these countries where they don't have freedom. You know, I I would talk to kids and try to explain Russian communism, and you'd have thought I was talking in a totally different language. You know, about aliens because it was something totally outside of the realm of what they could they could comprehend. Is the idea of what do you mean? The government tells you what to do and when to do it and do tells you what custom. you're going to do for a job and tells you all this stuff. I think that brings us back to one of our subjects we're going to talk about, was, which was history. And I think that's what we see today is Antifa is a good right. example. It's a good reflection of, I think, not all, but some kids going to college. And they're walking around with a hammer and sickle as a flag believing in communism yeah. with their Shea Rivera Shea Trevera t shirt yeah, yeah. yeah. Who, was, who was a terrorist right and and they don't understand that Mao Zedong killed more human beings than any other person in history yep what, so when my daughter was in China and she was um, an exchange student there they had a ceremony where they brought the American kids up and put red scarves on them and she knew what it was when it was happening most of the kids didn't know I think she was the only one that knew what was going on and she so she came home and she's unpacking and I said what the heck is this and it was a red scarf and she goes oh uh, they made me a red scarf girl and I was like what <laughs> they did what well I didn't want they were just going on and on. It was a ceremony, and they were going right. on and on about the program being nice and great. And then they did that. And I, I, it would have been rude for your daughter to actually say That's how she felt. She, yeah. she felt like it would be rude and that it maybe it was just a, um, it was a tradition more than it was that she was yeah. being roped into being a member of the Communist Party. Mm -hmm. And so it was what it was. But, but she knew what it was when it was happening, and she was not. Yeah, that would be weird. Really that would be like, that would be like being... You don't turn inadvertently, it down. Inadvertently, in, well, it's almost like inadvertently finding yourself at a satanic ceremony and somebody wants to I hate to when put, that happens. I know. <laughs> you think it's just a potluck. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> PTO <laughs> meeting. Yeah. And think. there's a goat. A uh, goat. <laughs> I thought we were going to eat the goat, but no. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, well, this right. conversation Awkward. is rambling over the place like <laughs> yes. a babbling brook. Yes, this is yes. a very hydrocophonic meeting oh. we're having here. So. Oh, I love that word. Yeah. Where did that word come from? I made that up. I heard it somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Was it you? Yes, it's the it's the it's the humility showing. Again. It's the word. It's the word that needed to be created to describe the sound of running water. So hydro, yeah. water, kin, moving, and phonium sound. Uh, I heard there was some word, and it's popular in Australia. It's like uh, the sound, the smell of the ground after a thunderstorm when it was very dry. You know, I don't mm -hmm. know. What's this, who cares about that word, right? So, yeah, well, that's Australia. Who cares? It's about Australia. That? Does it cover the sound of a frantic, aimless flash flood too? Because I, I, I suppose it would. Sort of I suppose it would, but I love the sound mm -hmm. of hydrocomphonia, and I get kind of nerdy about the whole thing. Like if I'm hiking with my family, I'll say, "Okay, everybody, stop. Shh, listen." Hydrocomphonia. They're like, oh, mom, okay, so it's a brook, okay, we get it. But I think it's beautiful, and it's a beautiful <laughs> thing. And you know, we need to stop and, they say stop and smell the roses, stop and listen to the brook, you know? Enjoy life. It is. Yeah. It, it, does, it, does, it does sound actually pretty awesome. Putin yeah. should do that. <laughs> Putin should. So, Janine, yes. you haven't stuck your oar. What did you want to talk about? Well, I mean, if we're staying on the floods idea, um, Actually, that's we, uh, it's, was the 79th anniversary of the 38 uh, hurricane and flood that took out East Ware. Oh, okay. And that's what I'm doing. My my master's thesis is going to be on the effect of the 38 flood flood on the town of Ware, New Hampshire. All right. 
and um, next year is the 80th anniversary of it because oh, really? it was in 19 it was in 1938. Mm. What, you, what when, when's the anniversary? September 21st, 1938. Okay, September all, 21st. all the bridges and where were taken out. Four women were killed because they were on the North Ware Bridge when it collapsed. Oh. Um, all the whatever industries and businesses were still left in town were taken out Gee, and it, is. it was it was a it was a huge disaster and, and where wasn't even as bad as down closer towards because it came in um southern connecticut R rhode island came across massachusetts and then came up so it took out the bridges in uh in going from hudson to nashua yep. as well yep. and bridges in manchester too yep going over the oh, it destroyed yeah not know that because uh the, the piscataquag river run, there's about 14 miles of piscataquag river that runs through the city the town of Ware, and that all goes into the merrimack and the merrimack runs all the way down through massachusetts and through lowell and yep. lawrence and right and sure. so, so what they did was to save lowell and lawrence they put in a dam project in where the everett dam and the uh hopkington dam those were built because they need to keep the Piscataqua River from getting into the Merrimack River and be able to keep that. And oh. East Ware became a floodplain. They, they took it by eminent domain. And that was, uh, it started in 1957 and, and the project ended in the early 60s, I think it was 61 or 62. And Massachusetts is supposed to pay the yes. town of Ware and they X number of dollars a year for taking all that land to save. It was eight th over 8,000 oh. acres of Ware were taken. Oh. By Mass. By Mass, yes, well, well, by the government. inadvertently, but, but not, be, not directly, but. But what they said was because it was being done to protect Massachusetts. Right. That, um, and they were going to lose all that ability to, you know, you can't sell it, you can't, you know. You can't tax it, it. You can't tax it. So they're supposed to send the town of Ware money every year. And do to, they? They do not. They do not. What would that take to, to ha get that to happen? Oh, that's easy. You take the dam down. <laughs> <laughs> next time, next, next good uh, snow melt, just forget to close the dam. <laughs> yeah, forget yeah. to. Well, uh, could our um, governor? speak to the we, uh, they have they've been negotiating this for years yeah. and it's just it's massachusetts it's got to get through their legislature you know how quickly that moves yes. yeah and if it's not of uh, value to massachusetts and right. people that vote for them they don't care at exactly. all right well they you watch the big bit. dig unfold for generations they don't vouch oh. on deals ever. <laughs> yeah ever, oh, ever and they always ever. have that great planning going on <laughs> yes they, yeah, yeah they're really really good but uh so yeah the the, the dam project and actually the um there's a the whole section is a floodplain. What are you getting your and, master's in history? Uh, it's public history. It's it's history with a public history major. And public history are the uh, archivists, curators, edu sure. uh, historical educators. When you go into a big uh, museum and the woman comes up and says, "Hi, I'll take you on the tour," that's a public historian. It's a dos they're called docents, mm. and um, that's I love doing that kind of stuff. I cool. love teaching history to kids and to people, and it's just. Um, and where history really is, you know, when you think of where, you think of this bedroom community that if you blink twice, you'll miss it, okay? You have to blink three times, quite a... Well, yeah, okay. Well, you'll they miss the center of town anyway, yes, yes. okay? Other than that, it's just all woods and you never know when you leave, <laughs> you know? Um, but it used to have uh, industries. It had, it was actually a, a, um, a I'm trying to think of the right word. Uh, it was a, a um, manufacturing. manufacturing center. They had five train stops in Ware. Really? Because they had that much manufacturing. Because wow. of the river. Because of, because of the Piscataqua. Yeah, it's 22 run, miles of Pisca or 14 miles of Piscataqua so River runs through there. The Piscataqua. Any way, river, any, any no town idea. that there's a river running through that you can right. attach a mill to. Yeah. Right. They had 22 mills at one point. Didn't they? Up and didn't down. Little Ware. Across that or river wow. runs through yep. it? Oh, that's no. something different. Oh, yes. that's yeah, different. But they did, they actually, they have the Junior Historical Society. If you'll give me just a second. Tell, wait, wait, wait. Before we run out yep. of time, because they used to have a clock here, so I knew how much time we had. I have no clue right now. How much time we got? Learn me. Ten minutes. Ten, Ten minutes. minutes, okay. Oh, before before we run out of time then, tell them about the... Uh, the um, visit gosh. to the archives? The visit to the archives? No, 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 because that's, that's... The state capital? No, please... The Pine Tree Rebellion. The Pine Tree Riot. Ah, Pine Tree yes. Riot. Pine Tree Riot. Um, this goes, what, what happened is, is in uh, April of 1772. Okay, so actually this before is, This is before, this oh, is before this is one stuff of, yeah, really this is happened. One of, this is one of the first uh, colonial rebe rebellions in the, in the country. 
Um, what happened was is that, and it dates back farther than that, the King George decided that he wanted all the great trees. Those beautiful, beautiful, tall ship white masts. pines. Ship for ship masts. Masts. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's Mass yes. Road in Goffstown. Yes. Because that's commerce. And yes. um, so what he would do is he would put on the broad arrow, which was basically in this triangular ship, two this way and one this way. They'd hack it into the tree. And if you the tree had a broad arrow on it, you couldn't sell it. Well, that did not go over well with the people who were running the lumber mills, because that's, or of the course, la landowners, right? yeah, or the landowners, that's yeah. their best trees. So um, the first, I believe it was Governor Wentworth, the first Governor Wentworth really didn't enforce the rules, but um, so they just kind of let it happen. The second Governor Wentworth, his son, did, and that did not go over well. So what happened was, is that a lot of the people, there were a bunch of guys from uh, Goffstown and um, where that had been arrested for selling the King's trees. The Goffstown and I think New Boston folks paid their fine. Where not so much. And the head of the riot was named um, Ebenezer Mudgett. And in, they were- Well, with a name like that, wouldn't you, you'd be probably a little, pretty angry little guy, right? <laughs> well, he was actually one of the most wealthy people in town. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah he was He was a, a huge- um, I know, but name like Mudgett, he seems- Oh, he, he seems had like a character out of a Hobbit movie. He was determined to have a legacy with a name like that. Yes, and he yes. Exactly. yes. Okay. But he, so uh, so he, he and a bunch of his guys uh, painted their face like they did for the, you know, um, the Boston Tea Party showed up in the bright a.m. early morning where the sheriff and his deputy were staying and proceeded to beat the deputy and the sheriff to within an inch of their lives. With pine boughs. No. No? No. Took, uh, well, but they're, they're, they had clubs with them, and then when they Ouch. needed it, they pulled up, uh, actually, they pulled out of the ceiling. They pulled uh, sections out of the ceiling, the, the panels, and beat them with the panels, and then... Mm. Um, sent them on their way uh, after they cut the ears and the mane and the tail on the horse. See, I, I feel sorry for the horse, okay? Feel free yeah, to do what you want to the show, but the was horse, was, he didn't have to do the horse. Yeah. Um, they got arrested and were brought in. Uh, didn't they get tarred and feathered too? No, they did not. Oh, no, no not only did they, no, not only did they not get tarred and feathered, but they were brought up in front of superior court and i actually was up that was i was up in the archives looking for was this they have the superior court records and mishias ware was one of the judges they not only were not tarred and feathered they basically had to say okay fine we won't ever do this again and they were charged 20 shillings now if you do the math 20 shillings was equal to one pound one pound at that point would be comparable to about 30 i think it's 31 dollars now Okay. So you're talking one. That's it. Per so it yeah. So it it, it really wasn't a big fine at all. That was all they no. were fined, and it was basically a slap on the wrist, go away. Um, huh? Because the three judges, where and the other two, I can't remember who the other two are. They were um, in favor of colonialism. Where ends up being the first governor of the? Uh, actually, he ends up being the first president of New Hampshire because that's what they called the governor. Sure. And uh, so he he ends up serving in many areas for. Uh, the, col the colonials. Mudgett ends up going out uh, on to fight in the Revolutionary War. His name is on the, is in, on the stone building in Ware as one of the uh, men who went to the Revolutionary War. Uh, I think he fought under John Stark. Is it true that Major General John Stark, who also owned a lumber mill, was, was sort of on the side of the colonialists on this pine tree? Oh, yeah. Rebellion? Oh, yeah. I would think so. Oh, yeah. There, there, it was not... You know, it was it was we have to charge live you something, go away. Yeah, yeah, live, yeah, for, live for your die. He Where he was, and um, yeah. his men actually were ne were not in the service. They kind of they refused they refused to fight under anybody but John Stark. So they would basically say, "Okay, General Stark, go grab your guys, get them, and, and let's get let's get things moving here." So, um, but yeah, the the Pine Tree Riot, and actually, if you read the the 1888 book, there that's the huge book on where. Um, it says at the very end, you know about the Portsmouth riot, you know about the Boston Tea Party. The reason you don't know about the Pine Tree riot is that they have better historians. So my goal is to kind of be a really good historian for Ware and start getting these kids to understand Excellent. that Ware is not this little bedroom community that doesn't have a history. This is no, a place there's that a lot of right-wing right fanatics there. You, you want them to know where they came from. Well, yes, we uh. want them to know where they came from <laughs> and where they're going. I don't see what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> I have the first constitution from the state that I, I saw. I got to see the original in the 
in the archives and that's oh. and she was just talking about the state archives and oh my gosh isn't that a wonderful place to that go that is a fantastic place to go <laughs> was it local? aren't they wicked nice uh fruit yes. street yes they are they're very nice in concord oh i know exactly where that is that's it's where my recounts yes happened. where they yeah, the they, i actually yeah. saw them i saw those they have all the they, they, he took me in the back and they have all the boxes they said you know that recount they're talking about yeah there's the boxes for it and i get yeah. to look at some of the ballot yeah they, they, he showed me some of the stuff in it. he said this is from this city it's like it, i was amazed and they have such amazing stuff back there i saw the um um new hampshire um ratification document there's only two of those in existence one's at the, the archives in uh, new Ham in concord the other one's at the archives in uh washington the national archives verification of ratification of the united states constitution cool there that's the document that changed the world because this? once we ratified it, we were the ninth state to ratify it, and we made it official. This is pretty right. special, too, because the date on it is January 5th, 1776. That's our first constitution here in the yep. state. And that yep. was the first constitution written in the, in the country. Yep. We in beat the, we beat the uh, Declaration predates of Independence. Predates it by five years. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, and predates the Declaration of Independence in July, written in July. Yep. Good See? One. So, I mean, this is something you'll want to read. I found this online. It's the... Um, the Lyman Goldman Law Library at the Yale Law School. Can you, you know, I post, we got, we got to go. So listen, can you do me a favor? Sure. On, I posted on Facebook that you, you two uh, crazy people were going to be here. Okay. I'll, I'll Could you link sure. a, a link just to that article? Sure. I would love that. To the Constitution. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If anybody's I, I'd, I'd like to read it, but I can't. That's yeah. too small for me. If anybody is interested in the Pine Tree Riot, um, Connie Evans just wrote a novelletta. On you on Ebenezer Mudgett and the Pine Tree Riot, it's very well done. So you may want to pick that up. I believe there's a very quickly growing new uh, uh, brew house here in New Hampshire that's based on, or at least inspired by Ebenezer himself, and it's ah. known as Abel Ebenezer. So there's a free plug for them. Ah. Um, because they cool. revere the spirit of uh, revere. independence. Uh, revere. See how revere I did that? The spirit. Yeah. that was good. I don't know where. That <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, we've to never forward. heard those jokes I before. I think we're, we're out of jo uh, out of t jokes, out of time. <laughs> 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 and so the word we want to leave you with today is hydroconfonia. Confonia. Yes, just pepper your pepper your ta your your conversation. Try to with use hydroconfonia in a in a uh, sentence at least once a day for the next until we see you next week. See you guys later. Thank you, ladies. <laughs>